Hello, and welcome to Lesson 3-5 on Solving Equations by Multiplying or Dividing Decimals. In last night's lesson, we talked about how to solve equations by adding or subtracting. So those, or these, multiplying and dividing, are really the only two operations left that we can do with decimals tonight. So we have two main objectives. First, you will be able to solve one-step decimal equations involving multiplication. And secondly, you will be able to solve one-step decimal equations using division. So let's get started. Now, it says warm up, find each product. Well, we can certainly do this. Uh, remember, when you multiply these, you don't actually have to line up the decimals. Sometimes they just automatically line up. What you want to do is line up the digits. All right? Because then you multiply like you normally would. 6 times 5 is 30. And then 5 times 2 is 10, plus 3 is 130, add a 0. And then I count how many hops. 1, 2. So 1, 2. My answer is 11 and 70, 70 hundredths. I would like you to do the same with 2 and 3 tonight. Just do 2 and 3. Don't worry about 4. All right, and when you're all done, come back and check your answers. So go ahead and do that, and then we'll get started with tonight's lesson. All right, so let's check 2 and 3. Here, I'm going to write 3 and 2 tenths times 15 hundredths. And again, I lined up the digits, not the decimal points. So I get 480, but then I count over hops. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So here my answer is 480 thousandths or 48 hundredths if you got rid of the zero at the end. And then 3 here, I have 11 and 3 hundredths times 6 tenths. And I multiply it out. And I count over. 1, 2, 3. And I get 6 and 618 thousandths. Let's get started with tonight's lesson. Now, again, I keep talking about these steps, and I have them written down here for you now. To solve equations, you need to remember these steps. First, find that variable. Then find what's on the same side in the operation. Are they adding it? Are they subtracting it? Are they multiplying it? Are they dividing it? And so on. And then three, you do the opposite of it. So you reverse the operation. So here, we have a problem. Again, we learned how to do in Chapter 2. 9 times r is the same as 54. Well, if I look for my variable, step one, I find r. Well, on the same side as this 9, and they have it together, 9r. Well, if you think back, when they have them together like this, that means to multiply. So really, 9r means 9 times r. So to get rid of it, you need to divide by 9. That's the only thing that'll leave r by itself. You're doing 9 times r. Well, if you divide it by 9, you're just left with 1r, or r. And what you do to one side, you do to the other. 54 divided by 9 is 6. We get r is the same as 6. All right, so now if I open that box, we have this one now. Solve. 9 tenths times r is the same as negative 5 and 4 tenths. Well, you go through those same steps. All right, so it's the same idea even though there are decimals. I find my variable, r. Well, I know they're doing multiplication, so I divide. And then I'm left with r equals, well, here I have to do some work. 5 and 4 tenths divided by 9 tenths. Well, I have to divide with the whole number on the outside, so I'm going to move the decimal point over on both of them. 9 doesn't go into 5, but it goes into 54 six times. So I know, I know r is equal to 6. I just have to decide if it's positive or negative. Well, up at the top, I have negative 5 and 4 tenths divided by a positive 9 tenths. When you multiply or divide, if the signs are the same, the answer is positive. If they're different, the answer is negative. Here, one's negative, one's positive. So my answer is a negative 6. All right, so here we have this example. And again, go through it with me. Solve it as I solve it. And then... Before you know it, you're going to be doing them alone. And I bet on the next problem, that's where you do them alone. So we have negative 6 and 4 tenths divided by 8 tenths times b. Well, my variable here is b. They're multiplying, so I have to divide. They're multiplying by 8 tenths, so I divide by it. That's the opposite. 
And I'm left with B is equal to, well, this is something I'll have to solve. 6 and 4 tenths divided by 8 tenths. Well, to make that 8 a whole number, I move it over once. Then you have to move it over here. And let's see, 8 goes into 64 8 times. And I am left with an 8. And I take a look, one's negative, one's positive. That means my answer is negative. We get a negative 8. All right, so here I have two problems. I would like you to go ahead and solve those. Again, go through those same steps. Find the variable, see what operation's going on, do the opposite, and then divide them out. When you're all done, come back and check your answer. So go ahead and pause me, and good luck. Let's check that first one, shall we? So here we have 0 and 8 tenths times x is the same as negative 1 and 6 tenths. Well, my variable here is x, and they're multiplying, so I divide. And I am left with x is equal to, well, whatever negative 1 and 6 tenths divided by 8 tenths is. So I need to do some work. And remember, the number on top is what's on the inside. And the number below in the denominator is what's getting divided by. So again, I change that 8 tenths to a whole number, and I get 2. And I take a look, negative 1 and 6 tenths divided by a positive 8 tenths. Well, one's negative, one's positive. My answer is negative 2. On this one, we have solve 1 and 15 hundredths is the same as 2 and 3 tenths times x. Again, same steps. My variable is x. I do the opposite of them multiplying by 2 and 3 tenths to both sides. I'm left with x is equal to... Well, 1 and 15 hundredths divided by 2 and 3 tenths. And, again, I need a whole number, so I move that decimal over. And I like to put it on top right away so I don't forget. Well, 23 doesn't go into 1 or 11, but it does go into 15, and I think I'm going to try 5 times. Because I know 3 times 5 is 15, so I'll check it out. 23 times 5, well, that's 15, 10. Well, would you look at that? That worked well. And I get 115, subtract it. Now here, oh, both answers are positive. I have a positive 1 and 15 hundredths and a positive 2 and 3 tenths. The signs are the same, so my answer is positive. I get 5 tenths. And really, you could write a 0 in front of that, so 5 tenths. All right, and now we have a word problem of it. Every day, the school cafeteria uses about 85 and 8 tenths gallons of milk. About how many days will it take for the cafeteria to use the 250 gallons in the refrigerator? So we need to solve this. We know that in the milk, or with milk at school, they use 85 and 8 tenths gallons per day. Now, we don't know how many days we're going to be able to use it, but we know that's per day. So, well... The number of days is our variable x. And we know that we want it to equal 250. We want to know how many days would that milk last. So you have to take the amount you use per day and divide it by that, well, 250 gallons. So again, we're going to solve it. My variable is x. We're multiplying by 85 and 8 tenths, so I'm going to divide. And then cross that out, and x is equal to... Well, if I solve this, 250 divided by 85 and 8 tenths. Again, I need a whole number, so I need to move that decimal point over. And I look at 250. Well, that's just a whole number. But there is a decimal right there, so I actually have to move that over too. So my 250 turns into 2,500. Remember, when you really move them over like that, you're actually multiplying. Here, we're mul here we multiplied by 10. 85 and 8 tenths times 10 is 858, and so on. So it doesn't go into 2 or 5 or 0, but we need to find out how many times 858 can go into 2,500. And I think, well, I am going to try... Maybe 3. Let's see if it will make 3. 8 times 3, 24, 17. Okay, that's a little too much. So it must only go in there two times, two days. So 858 times 2. And that gives me 1,716. I subtract that out. 
and I get 784. So really I get, well, it's very close to three days. So it lasts at least two, but it's approximately three days. All right, because we're going to get a decimal that continues on, I could add a zero to this. I'm going to erase some of this other work. All right, I could add a zero to this and keep going through, and I now can find out how many times 858 goes into 7,840, and I'm going to guess... Mm, we're going to try 8. 64, 46. Oh, I bet it could even go in there one more time. 72. Yep. So, 7722. Nice subtract it. So, I know it goes in there about two and, or it would last two and nine tenths days going on. So that's really about three days. So that milk would last three days. So now we're going to do the opposite. We learned how to solve, e e uh, solve equations by multiplying decimals. Well, now we're doing the opposite of it. We're going to solve equations by, or excuse me, we solved equations by dividing. Now we have to solve equations by multiplying. So here we have negative 37 and 5 tenths is the same as C divided by negative 1 and 2 tenths. Well, again, you go through those steps. My variable is C. I know this bar means they're dividing. Well, the opposite of dividing is multiplying by a negative 1 and 2 tenths. So I'm going to do that. And I solve it and see what I get. All right, and then I'm left with, well, count off how many hops. That's two, one, two. All right, and I get 45. So C is equal to 45, but I should see if it's positive or negative 45. Well, two negatives, the signs are the same, so that means my answer is positive. C is 45. So again, on each side, I just multiplied by what they were dividing by. So I multiplied by negative 1 and 2 tenths. Then I went through those steps to multiply. I lined up the digits place when you multiply, and I went through it. So we have this one. We have A, R divided by negative 6. is the same as 5 tenths. Well, same steps. I find my variable r. And I'm dividing by negative 6. Well, the opposite of dividing is multiplying. And then I multiply this side by a negative 6 as well. So let's see what r is equal to. 6 times 5 is 30. Well, 0 times 6 is 0, but I can add 3 to that. And again, because it's decimals, I have to count how many hops. This took one, so I do one hop here. And I get r is equal to, well, 3.0, or 3 and 0 tenths, which is just 3. I take a look. Well, I'm multiplying by a positive and a negative. The signs are different, so that means my answer is negative. All right, go ahead and do b now. We have s divided by 2 and 5 tenths is the same as 5. When you're all done, come back and check your answer. See if you get the right one. All right, so go ahead. Pause me now. All right, so let's check B then. Well, my variable is S, and they're dividing by 2 and 5 tenths, so I multiply by it. And those cross out. Again, when you multiply and divide by the same number, it ends up being a 1. So here I do the same times 2 and 5 tenths. Now here, I have a hard time multiplying 5 times 2 and 5 tenths. I want to switch them. I'm going to switch it so my bigger number is on top. 5 times 5 is 25. Put down the 5, carry the 2. 5 times 2 is 10. Plus 2 is 12. Count the hops, that's 1. So I get 12 and 5 tenths. So I take a look. Well, the 5 was positive, and so was the 2 and 5 tenths. The signs are the same, so my answer is positive. All right, and now we have a word problem for tonight. A little league player was at bat 15 times and had a 
batting average of 133 thousandths, rounded to the nearest thousandth. The batting average formula is batting average A is equal to the number of hits divided by the number of times at bat, so N. Use a formula to find the number of hits made. All right, so we know a few pieces of information. A stands for the average, his batting average. What they tell us right here is 133 thousandths. Now, H stands for the number of times he hit the ball, all right, not at bat. So that is a piece we're missing. We don't know how many times he hit the ball, but we know he was up to bat 15 times, so that is B. There we go. Now we solve. And again, same idea occurs. We know we're solving for a variable H, and we're dividing, so we need to multiply by 15. And I'm going to go ahead and solve that. 3 times 5 is 15. 15, 16. And I am left with 5, 9, 9, 1. Now I count the hops. 1, 2, 3. So we get 1 and 995 thousandths. Now we know that's the number of hits he made, which really doesn't make much sense. You can't be hit the ball 1 in 995 thousandths of the time. But the thing we get here is he hit the ball two times. Remember, they round the batting average all right, to the nearest thousandth. So he hit the ball two times. He says if we use the actual and you multiplied it out or solved it, then you would get the uh, two hits, two pieces there. All right, so that is your uh, lesson for tonight. That was 3-5. And in tonight's lesson, we talked about how to solve equations by multiplying or dividing. I will see you in class tomorrow. Have a great night.